What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back for another live Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battle against a subscriber slash follower on Twitter. Today we are going up against Jimmy in an RU battle and for some reason most of my Pokemon are actually in the tier. What is going on with that? That like never happens. Oh, it looks like I only have one Pokemon that is not RU. So anyway, uh, that aside, uh, before we get started today, just a friendly little reminder in case you guys haven't done so already, uh, if you would like to show your support, feel free to do so by clicking that like button right below this video. That always helps out a lot, and shout out to you guys uh, that always stop by to show your support. You guys are freaking awesome. Uh, and also, if you would like to uh, leave a suggestion down below in the comments for a Pokemon you would like to see or sets you would like to see used, I uh, always read through and, you know, I'm always looking to breed new things and try new things out. So uh, your comments, suggestions specifically, uh, really do help out in that regard. Because I don't, I don't always have the uh, best ideas. So, <laughs> yeah, getting some other perspectives is always good. Uh, and last thing that I probably should mention is that those of you who have been asking uh, in the comment section for battles, there's been quite a few of you, I don't take my battles over YouTube just because it's impossible to keep straight and YouTube doesn't always notify me of new comments and such, uh, so I do take my battles over Twitter, uh, the link is always in the description below, you don't necessarily have to follow me there, um, but if you want to just check from time to time to see if I'm looking for battles, that is there for you guys in case you want to do that. Uh, so now we should probably go over what the actual team is because I've spent all this time talking about nonsense. Uh, all right, so we've got our choice scarf Embor. Chris is here yet again, and he now has Reckless as a legal ability. Then we have physically defensive Golbat with Eviolite. Nothing too fancy there. Especially defensive Dredagon, which is making a debut on the channel uh, with Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin. That's always fun. Uh, then we have Life Orb, Ohm the Jolteon, a recurring character here. Ohm is always just here doing stuff. Uh, then we have our Crustle, another new Pokemon that I don't think I've used yet. That's going to be our Hazard Setter, and it's actually packing the red card. Uh, it doesn't need a Focus Sash or anything like that because it has Sturdy as the ability. So, And then we have our Spin Blocker, which is going to be Durandal, the Dewblade. I keep wanting to call you Aegislash, and you're not Aegislash. Uh, Dewblade is a great spin blocker in this tier. Because looking at his team, the only thing that can potentially get rid of hazards is rapid spin on that Hitmonchan. And Hitmonchan doesn't even get knockoff, so it can do diddly squat to a Dewblade. The most he could do is fire punch if he carries that, which would be kind of kind of weird. Um, but I'm still not afraid of it, and I can even set up on him. Uh, we just need to be aware of the Audino and the x -Bloud trying to switch in on... Shadow Sneaks, if we're going to go for that, so uh, we might want to be clicking si I keep wanting to call it Secret Sword. Sacred Sword! My gosh, I mix everything up. Everything that sounds similar, I just mix it up. So we're leading off with our Crustle here as he leads off with the Tangrowth, and the other thing that I noticed is this is such a fat team that he has. It really, really is. And I don't mean that in a bad way, um, because Jimmy is a great subscriber. He's always in the comment section. If you see him down there, by the way, uh, let him know that uh, it was a fun battle and, and all that stuff, because, yeah, we like to uh, show some respect to the people that battle on this channel. Uh, but anyway, his team, it has a regenerator core. He's got Tangrowth and Slowking plus Mega Audino. This is going to just, it's going to be a long battle, I have a feeling. Um, so, he... Gets sent out into Audino via the red card as he went for the Giga Drain, which didn't even do half, and we were able to get our Stealth Rocks up. Now I'm going to go for Spikes because I don't think he can kill me with this. The most that he can do is start setting up Calm Mines. He is going to straight away go for the Mega Evolution, which is completely fine with me. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate I can't spam Dragon Tail with uh, Dredagon, but that is fine. We're going to get up a layer of Spikes here. And he does go for the Draining Kiss. That shouldn't kill me. No, we may even be able to take another one. Just barely. I guess it would depend on the roll. Um, I kind of want to just go for Spikes again, though. Uh, maybe we should save this. Because I can come in and outspeed the Tangrowth and set up more hazards. So that has some potential. It definitely has some potential. Um, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to stay in. We're going to go for Spikes. He is going to withdraw. Maybe he's going to go right into Hitmonchan. Yes, he does go into the Hitmonchan, so we're going to go straight into Dewblade uh, on the next turn here. As he's going to get hurt by the Hazards. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be his spinner. 
So Hitmonchan isn't the greatest spinner, honestly, just because it doesn't have a way to deal with spin blockers like uh, Dewblade. <laughs> so we're going to go right into it. And now we have two layers of spikes in, so if we can come in for free on Tangrowth, we can get up that third layer. So out comes the beautiful shiny Durandal, and he does go for the rapid spin, and that's not going to do anything because Dewblade is a beast. So now, hmm, question is, do I want to pull a double? I kind of do because I feel like he's just going to switch here. Hitmonchan cannot touch Dewblade. And even Fire Punch, if he has it, is not going to do much. I'm kind of tempted to go right back into Crustle. Um, kind of, kind of tempted. And we can really get a free switch into anything. It's just, what is he going to want to go into? Possibly the Audino? But, I mean, that, he, then he'll risk taking a Gyro Ball, and I don't know if he'll want to do that. Or an Iron Head, because he doesn't know what I have yet. Uh, we can just go into Jolteon, too. And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go into Jolteon as he does switch. And he's going to go into the Tan Growth, which is perfect. Because that's going to be his physically defensive wall. So going into Jolteon uh, is the perfect thing for us, because I actually have Signal Beam. And this Jolteon might end up being my win condition. It does outspeed everything on his team. And I should be able to take care of Slow King and the Tangrowth. This should be the only thing on my team that can take care of both of them. Um, and that's his Regenerator Core. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Do I go for the Volt Switch? I mean, I think that he's not going to be afraid of me until I show up the Signal Beam. So I got to show it to him. And he, oh, he just switches out. Okay, he doesn't want to take, doesn't want to take any hits. He's going to go right back into Hitmonchan here. So he's going to take more damage from all the hazards. He does resist the Stealth Rock, but the spikes add up. And Signal Beam probably won't do too much. Yeah, yeah, that does negligible damage. We're going to show off our Life Orb so he knows that we are not choice now. I'm trying to figure out what item this thing is. It hasn't shown lefties. It hasn't attacked because it went for rapid spin, but that didn't affect us. I doubt that he's Life Orb. It's probably Assault Vest. So if he's Assault Vest, we can just Volt Switch and go right back into Dewblade and get some more damage off and then threaten him with a Shadow Sneak. So, yeah, we'll go for the Volt Switch here. And, yeah, that is definitely Assault Vest, judging from that damage. That did not do very much at all. That's a Life Orb Jolteon, my goodness. So he's definitely within range of a Shadow Sneak now, and I'm going to go into Dewblade because, as I mentioned quite a few times, Simmonchan cannot touch me. He's got nothing that he can do. And he goes for the Drain Punch, and we are immune to that. Now, here's where things get tricky. If I let him come in for free with uh, especially x Bloud, which I would think he'd want to go into here, that's a big problem. I don't really have anything that wants to take Boom Burst. Because even... Even Dewblade doesn't take special hits that well. Um, so, we could Swords Dance predicting a switch. But, 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 I'm very tempted to just click Sacred Sword predicting that x Bloud to come in. Because I don't know if he's going to want to leave that Hitmonchan in. I think he can come back in one more time, possibly. So, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click Sacred Sword predicting x Bloud. He does withdraw. Show me the x Bloud, because that's an Oko. Show me the x Bloud. Yes! Yes! There's the x Bloud. Oh, that's a wall breaker out of here. With those hazards, you are not taking this, my friend. You are not taking this. Boom! Down goes the x Bloud. So that's a huge deal for my team, because, like I said, uh, even Dredagon, which is my special wall, quote-unquote, doesn't really like uh, taking... Boom Burst. Nothing on my team really does. And now he's going to go into Tangrowth because that's his physical wall, obviously. This is going to be such a problem to deal with. It's going to be such a problem to deal with. I know Jolteon can handle his Regenerator Core, like I said, but getting it in free is the, is the catch. Because if I can't get it in free, it'll get worn down very easily. It's not going to take a lot of hits plus Life Orb damage, so we need to be careful. I'm going to switch in... The Crustle here predicting a knockoff, because we already used our item, so that won't kill, and then we can outspeed. And he does go over the knockoff. So, yeah, we're going to survive that. We can actually take one more knockoff if he really wants to go for it. Giga Drain should kill us, though. And now we can set up our final layer of spikes, 
which is exactly what I wanted. And we do outspeed, and he's probably just going to kill us here, I would assume. Yeah, he just goes for the Giga Drain, so we have all of our hazards up, which, I mean, I didn't really think we were going to be able to get that to happen, but I will take it. I will definitely take it. So Krustle goes down, and now we have to think about what we want to do here. How are we going to deal with this Tangrowth? So if I go into Enbor and just go click Flare Blitz, he's going to switch in Slow King. And I don't want to take all kinds of recoil for no reason, because that will wear myself down pretty fast. Um, let's see, let's see. We could go into Golbat, but I'm quite afraid of the knockoff. We'd like to be very cautious with uh, with Golbat's Eviolite. And uh, actually Dewblade, too, but Golbat is supposed to be able to take some hits, so we're not going to be able to do that if we don't have the Eevee Light. And his team isn't that powerful either. He's got the Tyrantrum, which still kind of scares me. But with that x Bloud gone, that's a huge hit to his team offensively. He can't put a lot of pressure on me, which is good. So I'm going to go into Jolteon because, yeah, that makes the most sense. And I will Volt Switch, predicting him to switch because he won't want to take a uh, Signal Beam. So, if I had to guess, I would say that Audino would want to come in here. That would be my guess. He is going to switch. See what he goes into. And it's going to be the Tyrantrum, actually, because that resists the Volt Switch, and Signal Beam was not going to be killing him, so that makes sense. Takes all that hazard damage, and Volt Switch should put him down into a range uh, below half. Was that a crit? That was a crit. I was like, that did so much damage! Jeez! So now he's definitely within Shadow Sneak range as my cat is like attacking the wall behind me. So you probably can hear all kinds of scratching noises. I apologize for that. I, f I feel like I'm apologizing in every video for my cat making noise. <laughs> because, I don't know, he's just doing weird things today. And every day. Um, we could immediately threaten him out with Embor. Well, not threaten him out, but just kind of force him to sack this Tyrantrum. Um, but I don't know if I want to lock myself into a move. Makes more sense to just go in with Dewblade and go for Shadow Sneak. Because if he wants to save this thing, it just dies upon re-entry. I mean, unless he's really confident that he can get off a Rapid Spin with Hitmonchan. But Hitmonchan is not going to take any more hits, really. It's at a low amount of health. So we're just going to click Shadow Sneak, and Tyrantrum's going to go down. So that crit definitely mattered. Um, and it wasn't going to kill him either way, but uh, I don't think he was going to be within the range of Shadow Sneak if we did not get that crit. So I probably would have been forced to go into Embor and click the superpower. So then he could have brought in Slow King and it could be a whole thing. Or even uh, Audino. So that's a bit unfortunate, but it happens. So we're not going to dwell on it. In comes the Tangrowth again. Uh, this tan growth is such a problem. Such a problem. And I don't want to stay in and take a knockoff, so we have to switch. I'm going to go into Drudagon, because he wants to knock off my Rocky Helmet. That's fine. And he does go for the knockoff. So that really doesn't do that much, and he's going to take all kinds of recoil from the rough skin, from the Rocky Helmet. That's why I love Drudagon. It's good physically defensive, it's good specially defensive, it's good as like a life orb, sheer force set. So many things that it can do. It can set up stealth rock, it has glare, has dragon tail, so many good things. I'm surprised I haven't used Jodagon more. I think I've only used it once before maybe, and that was like in the X and Y days. I think I used an assault vest variant that was uh, offensive, which is pretty fun to use too. Uh, Alright, so now let's see. Let's see, what are we going to do? I feel like this is going to become such a stall fest because he's got Hitmonchan as his only offensive Pokemon now. Because the only other thing he could have would be the Audino with, like, Calm Mind, I guess? And we can't phase that, so that could be a problem. Because I have Dragon Tail, but obviously Audino is not affected by that. Uh, I kind of want to just glare. So I'm going to glare whatever comes in. Oh, no, he's just going to go for the Synthesis. Okay. So he's Regenerator with Synthesis. This is going to take forever to kill this thing. 
It really, really is. And like I said, I can go into Jolteon and threaten it. I don't think I can Oko with Signal Beam. And I don't want to take all that damage. Because it could very well end up being that Jolteon is my win condition. My only thing that could break through uh, his Regenerator Core by itself. Um... So, I kind of want to just Dragon Tail, and that's what I'm going to do. And he goes for the Sludge Bomb, which is fine. Kind of weird to see that on a Tangrowth. He does get the first turn Poison, uh, which is a 30% chance. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, Scald Burns and such. So, yeah. We're going to Dragon Tail him out. He does get his Regenerator back, and he goes into Slow King. His other Regenerator Pokemon. Which, this could be a problem if he has Ice Beam. He shows off the lefties, so he's definitely going to be a defensive variant. So, I mean, that should have been pretty obvious just looking at his team. Tangrowth, physically defensive, Slow King, specially defensive, pretty standard. Uh, I'm not too worried about the poison either because I do have Rest Talk on this. So, I should be fine. I just, I don't know if I want to take an Ice Beam. I'm specially defensive though, so I probably can take one if he's carrying it. I'm trying to think, what would this thing normally carry as a defensive Pokemon? It would carry Scald. It would carry probably Slack Off. And then maybe T-Wave. And then some other coverage move, like Ice Beam or, uh, I don't know, Psy Shock or Psychic or something. And he's just going to straight up withdraw. Well, okay then. And he's going to go back into Tangrowth. And he's back at full health, thanks to the Regenerator. He is going to take all kinds of hazards damage. Which pretty much nullifies the regenerator that he gets. Kind of. Kind of, sort of. That's pretty much how much he gets back. So that's good, I guess. We're going to rest off the poison. So, goodbye poisoning. Now we don't have to deal with that residual damage on this Dredagon, which is great. Oh, the stall. This stall. It's not purposely stalling because he doesn't have... From what I've seen, he's got nothing with Toxic, so it's not like a it's not a stall team. He just uh, has some bulky things. That's just what it comes down to. To be fair, I have some really bulky things on my team too, because I have Golbat and Dredagon is bulky as can be, and Dewblade too. Dewblade's even a bulky Pokemon. So yeah. Uh, all right. I guess we'll go for the Sleep Talk, and at least burn one turn of sleep here, because I, I don't really think he can do much to me. He's got. We've actually we've seen his whole move set. He's got Synthesis, Giga Drain, Knockoff, and Sludge Bomb. So he doesn't have Leech Seed. He doesn't have Sleep Powder, which makes this not very dangerous to me. I'm not too afraid of this. Not too afraid of it at all. And he only has eight PP on Synthesis, so that can get worn down. So we do pull a Dragon Tail, and we don't miss it. How about that? So we're gonna get rid of this Tangrowth. And out comes the Hitmonchan to take all kinds of hazards damage. And with three layers of spikes, I think he's dead. And he is. So that's great. That means that he doesn't have that as fodder now. Um, because fodder is kind of, kind of like gold on a team that has a Regenerator Core. Because if you can switch your Regenerator Pokemon out and then back in. Or switch back into your other, you know, appropriate switch. And you get all that health back. Oh, man. All right, so now we're down to the three defensive Pokemon. Audino, Tangrowth, and Slowking. And Audino most likely has Wish. Most likely has Heal Bell, too. So glaring the Tangrowth really didn't do much for us. He does go for the Draining Kiss, and because of that, I'm going into Batsy to take that. And we actually took that pretty well. Um, wait a minute, this might be specially defensive Golbat. I think I said it was physically defensive at the beginning. I don't remember which one I brought now, which is bad. I guess it doesn't matter because this whole team is defensive now. Toxic and Taunt are going to be uh, very, very important to this set. Uh, or very, very important to this battle, I should say. And I can Taunt him to prevent him from wishing and doing other shenanigans like Heal Bell. I'm going to Super Fang, and he's going to switch out into the Slow King, which means he probably has Psychic Stab. Which is unfortunate, because I don't like that. And so he takes all that hazardous damage, of course, and we go for a Super Fang, and he avoids the attack. Which stinks. It's a 90% accuracy move, and I miss it quite often. Super Fang is just not my friend. I do miss it a lot. I don't know why. 
and don't know why. Toxic is also a 90% accuracy move, and I don't really miss that too often. I don't know. I tend to hit on that a lot and just miss all of my super fangs. Kind of want to just go for it again, but uh, it's more important to have this thing toxic, so I'm going to go right for that. Get some residual damage going on this thing. If I can toxic everything, that'd be great. He does show off the Psy Shock, and that does quite a bit of damage. Pretty sure this is specially defensive Golbat. I can't believe I forgot which Golbat I brought. That is pathetic. <laughs> I don't even know what's on my own team. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous indeed. Okay, so this is a problem. I mean, I can roost all this, I guess. But once he gets down below like half or so, he's just going to switch out and go into Audino and do shenanigans. Or go into Tangrowth and try to knock off my Eviolite. Because once I lose my Eviolite, I'm not going to be taking those Psy Shocks too well. He does opt to go for the Scald. Try to get a burn, I guess. Doesn't get it. So that's good. So that residual damage would not be too great. Oh, breaking through this team is a chore. It really is. It really, really is. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. We could go into Drudagon because he probably can't do anything to me, but that's just allowing him to get a safe switch into Audino and Heal Bell. Which, to be fair, I kind of would like him to Heal Bell just so we can get rid of the Paralysis on Tangrowth. Because I'd much rather have that Toxic than Paralyzed. But I don't know if that's worth just switching in Dredagon for. Um, and I don't want to switch Jolteon in on an attack. That's the thing. So if I take damage on it, especially if I get burned, then that limits how many times I can attack. And I don't think I can one-shot anything. So, yeah. And he does switch. Oh, don't go into Audino. No, he goes into Audino as I switch in Dredagon. That's, that's not good. Because I cannot touch this thing. And he's going to get free everything. And I can't stay in. I'm going to have to go back into Golbat, I guess, and try to taunt him. Hopefully he goes for Heal Bell this turn. Because then I'll taunt you so you can't wish pass. That'd be great. That'd be great. He does go for the wish. <sighs> and he probably has Protect, too. So that means... Well, if he does have Protect, then he doesn't have Calm Mind. So I guess we'll see here. Um... what to do. I kind of want to taunt you, but I also don't want you to pass this into anything. I mean, it's not going to matter because the Regenerator... Oh, the Regenerator is such a problem! <laughs> it is such a problem. I get so salty when I go up against Regenerator cores because I always run into the same issues. Uh, we'll go for Taunt, because that's, I think, my best play. And he does try to go for the Heal Bell, so he doesn't show off the Protect. He still could have that Calm Mind, but he can't go for it because he's taunted. Which means he's likely going to switch into something, and I'm just going to Super Fang. Probably Tangrowth to try to knock off stuff. The Draining Kiss is going to do absolutely nothing. It's not worth going for it at this point. I really don't have any reason to switch out Golbat, even if I were to predict you to switch out Tangrowth. Uh, there's really no point. So he's going to withdraw. And he is going to go into the Tangrowth, as expected. So he'll take all that Hazardous damage, and the Super Fang should bring him down to about, like, a fourth of his remaining HP. And it actually connects this time. Look at that. Actually hitting. Oh, all right. And there's the Lefty's Recovery, and he's probably just going to Synthesis, and I can't Toxic you. I mean, I can Taunt you, but I don't want to get knock -offed. That's the thing. I really don't want to get knock -offed. We could just try to take a risk here and go into Jolteon. Or we can... You know what? I'm going to go into Embor. I'm going to go into Embor, and I'm going to try to catch Slowking switching in, because I think that's what he's going to do. So we'll go into Embor. Chris is finally here, and he's paralyzed, and he can't move. So I don't think it makes sense for him to leave Tangrowth in here, because if I click Flare Blitz, it just dies, and that he pretty much loses from that point, because he has nothing to sponge physical attacks. Um... So, yeah, it makes the most sense for him to switch out, and his only switch really is Slow King. So that's what Wild Charge is for. It's for hitting uh, those water types that like to switch in on Embor. I could go for Super Power 2, I guess. But Audino is a thing, 
I mean, I don't think he'll switch Audino in. Because it's going to take all the hazards damage. If he want, yeah, because he's not going to switch Audino in. So if he's going to switch anything in, it's going to be Slowking. So we have to go for the Wild Charge. That's the play to make. And he stays in! Are you kidding me? Why are you leaving your Tangrowth in? You're just going to let it die? Or did I just get predicted? And he goes for the Synthesis. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I just over-predicted right there. The way he's been playing, he's been switching back and forth between the different Regenerator Core things. I really thought that Slow King was coming out right there. And that was going to be dead as anything. Oh, I can't believe that. Now I have to switch. Now I have to switch. I clicked Wild Charge again, assuming he might switch uh, right here, but nope. Go for the knockoff. Go for the knockoff. No, he goes for Sludge Bomb. Well, crap. I'm just, I'm upset. <laughs> I'm upset with my decision. Um, yeah, it was just, I guess, the wrong play. It was the wrong play. Because if he knocked off my Choice Scarf, I would have been fine to switch moves, and I could have Flare Blitzed him. And then if he switched in Slow King, I could then change to Wild Charge. Now we have to switch, because we're locked in. And I'm going to go into Dredagon. As he goes for the Sludge Bomb again. And this is really the only thing on the team that doesn't mind Sludge Bombs. I mean, I guess Dewblade, too, but I also don't want to take a knockoff to the face. So, yeah. I'm playing very conservatively, I know. I know that. When it comes to switching things in, I guess, on knockoffs, I, I played very aggressively going for the wild charge there. That was going out on a limb. And uh, we were able to catch the X-Bloud switching in, so that was nice. And we pull a rest on the Sleep Talk as he just continues to go for Sludge Bomb. And this is starting to get, like... Uh, <laughs> starting to get a bit ridiculous ridiculous I need to get Jolteon in that's just what it comes down to that needs to be the goal I'm gonna go for Dragon Tail here get this thing out this thing is such a problem goes for the Sludge Bomb again brings us down to about half we're gonna wake up there's the Dragon Tail surprised I haven't missed the Dragon Tail in this battle and we get a crit which is completely meaningless because it's a Tangrowth and out comes the Audino and he is going to be able to do all kinds of things that I don't like. Because he can wish or he can heal bell here. Uh, let's see. What is my best play at this point in time? Possibly switching in Chris again and just clicking Flare Blitz. I don't... The, the problem that I have is that... If I bring in Chris and click Flare Blitz, I don't think it's a 2-hit KO on Slowking. If it was, I would go for it regardless. Um, I, I'm going to go into, into uh, Chris anyway here. I'm going to go for it. I don't think he's going to go for Draining Kiss. He's either going to go for Wish or Heal Bell. I'm predicting Heal Bell. No, he goes for the Wish. Okay, so my predictions stink. That's basically what it comes down to. I was uh, spot on in the beginning of the game, and I have fallen off the wagon. <sighs> I mean, at least I made it when it counted, I guess, and, you know, there was some offensive pressure. But I'm just going to go for Flare Blitz. He doesn't try to pass the wish. And you're dead. You're dead. No, you're not dead. You're physically defensive. And he goes for Heal Bell. And he's going to get all of his HP back. This is not good. I don't think he has Protect, though. He hasn't shown it. He hasn't shown it. So Flare Blitz is a 2-8 KO from there. Um, I'm tempted to just stay in and Flare Blitz here. Because it's a 2-8 it's a KO from where he's at right now. But, you know what? We're going to go into uh, Golbat. We're going to go into Golbat. Taunt this thing and uh, at least Toxic some, some more things. He goes with a Draining Kiss for damage, which is fine. All right, we need to bring this home. We have all of the uh, advantages. We have five Pokemon on our team that are relatively healthy. We need to just finish this team off. This is dragging on way too long. Like, this <laughs> this video is like a half an hour long already. So I'm going to Toxic you, and then I'm going to Taunt you so that you can't do any kind of nonsense. He does go for Wish, which is fine because the Toxic damage is going to start racking up. I really want to see what that last move is. We've seen Wish, Heal Bell, and Draining Kiss. He hasn't shown off the Protect, and I feel like he kind of needed to against the Embor, unless he was that confident he was going to take that hit. So I'm going to taunt you. 
and he went for the draining kiss again. Interesting. Maybe it is Combine. He just doesn't feel comfortable setting up here. I don't know. So he's going to get all of his HP back thanks to that wish. There's the toxic damage. And because he's taunted, I would expect you to switch here. And you're not going to stay in and just spam draining kiss, right? That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I'm going to super fang you. Because whatever you switch in is going to take 50%. Assuming the super fang actually connects, in comes the Tangrowth. Okay. Take all that hazard damage. I'm so happy that I got all of those hazards up. Otherwise, this these things would be so much more difficult to take down. They really would. So that brings him down to a pretty low range here. And I'm tempted to just sacrifice my Eevee Light now to just Toxic. I'm legitimately thinking about doing that. I know he's going to go for the knockoff. We could taunt him to prevent a Synthesis, too. That's also really tempting. But. But, but, but. We could just switch in Ambor, predicting that knockoff to try to get rid of our Choice Scarf so that we can uh, switch moves. Which would then be the end of one of his Pokemon. And all we need to do is break one of them. We really just need to break one. Because... If we get rid of that Audino, he can't get rid of the Toxic Poisoning that we can inflict on both of his Pokemon. And he also cannot... He hasn't tried to Wish Pass, but that will be off the table as well. And if we get rid of Tangrowth, then Dewblade should be able to set up. Especially on Audino. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Decisions, decisions. I feel like I'm making my moves in slow motion right now. I'm going to go for Toxic. I'm going to sacrifice my uh, Eevee Light to have this thing toxic If you want to bring in Audino, I'm going to taunt you. This needs to end. This needs to end. He goes for the Synthesis. That's perfect. That is perfect. I don't know how many times he's used Synthesis. Three now? He still has five left. Oh, my gosh. This is not going to be a PP war. We're going to end this before then. And I think I'm just going to have to go out on a limb and allow something like Jolteon to take some damage to break through his team. I guess the problem that I have here is that the things that I use for wall breakers uh, don't really work when you have regenerator cores without predictions. And I had one chance and I, I got it wrong by clicking wild charge. I'm going to go into Dredagon here now. As he goes for the knockoff, so you're going to take some more uh, damage from that. So there's the rough skin. And there is... Oh, wait, that's the lefties. That would be the lefties. Then we have toxic damage. And then we can try to switch back into Golbat and taunt you, I guess. <laughs> this, is, this is just nonsense. This is really just nonsense at this point. Uh, let's see. What would be the move of choice here? Sludge Bomb, I guess. Either Sludge Bomb or Switch. No reason to go for Giga Drain. We resist that. No reason to go for Knock Off and take all kinds of damage on himself. Um, so we could use this opportunity to switch in Chris again. And then just click Flare Blitz no matter what. But you know what? I'm going to take a risk because I want this to end. So he's going to withdraw, which means we're getting a safe switch into Jolteon. I should have done this ages ago. I should have done this ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, I can't believe I let it let it drag on this far. Uh, so with all of those hazards damage plus the toxic, I think we're going to be able to kill this Audino. I hope so. Get in there, Ohm. Come on, we need to break this. He's special, or not specially defensive. He's physically defensive, as we saw from how much he took from Flare Blitz. Has to be physically defensive. Because that's a reckless Embor. So... Yeah, we just have to go for T-Bolt and hope that it kills, basically. I mean, even if he gets a Wish off here, T-Bolt plus Toxic Damage. I think that's going to be enough. So I'm going to go for it. And he's going to stay in. I think Audino's going down. I think you're going down. And yeah, you're not going to survive the Toxic Damage. As he does try to Wish here. And that's not going to do him any good. It's not going to do him any good because the Toxic is going to take him out. So thank you, Hazards, because that is the main reason that this Audino is going down right now. Without those Hazards, um, 
yeah, he was going to be able to get his HP back. Unless he doesn't have Protect, I guess. And he goes into Slow King. So, I guess he's thinking that he has a better chance of surviving with Slow King than he does with Tangrowth, because Tangrowth's special defense is awful, and he doesn't have an Assault Vest. So, I really don't see any reason to go for anything but Thunderbolt. We're just going to go for it. Thank you, Ohm, from, for saving us from this, this situation. <laughs> Saving me from my bad plays. <sighs> now, I don't know if this is going to kill, but it should do a lot of damage. I would think. And never mind, it kills. That's not even a critical hit. Wow, okay. I wonder if he had any physical defense investment. I was not expecting that to do so much damage to a Slow King. That's crazy. Maybe I'm just underestimating the power of Ohm. Who knows? And now we're in a great position because Tangrowth is his final Pokemon. He takes all of that Hazard's damage. He cannot recover it via uh, Regenerator. He's also Toxic, so that's just going to build up. And Signal Beam plus the Toxic damage should kill. And actually, we don't even need to worry about the Toxic damage because Signal Beam just straight up KOs. And finally, the Regenerator Core is broken, and that is going to be the match. I think that was the longest 5-0 uh, in my life. So that's why I always say that the score doesn't matter, because that was a pretty close match. It was back and forth. We, I feel like we had the momentum for most of the battle, um, but it was still kind of back and forth, and it took forever for us to break through that team, so by no means was it like we just ran away with that. Uh, so I want to thank you guys if you made it this long, because that was a bit of a, uh, <laughs> not a stall fest, but I don't know, it just kind of drug on a long time. Uh, so yeah, kudos for making it. Uh, thank you very much for the battle, Jimmy. Looking forward to another one in the future. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed, please make sure you're leaving a like rating or a comment or whatever you would like to do. And I will see you all next time. But until then, game on.